Hello, everybody. It is the last Raider. I am back with another video, and wow, you know, uh, the McCloskey situation, or Ken and Karen, or Suburban Commandos, as we like to call them, has it, it just has Kim Gardner in has her, I guess her briefs in a wad or whatnot. Um, good God! Now, all right. So I get up uh, on Saturday to see that Mark Murkowski has had his gun confiscated by the police department and all of the gun YouTubers that are out there freaking out to some extent. Um, and a lot of, a, a lot of alt media YouTubers were freaking out about them having their guns confiscated. So I thought, uh, you know, for me that, that wouldn't be a big deal. But a lot of people don't understand Missouri and they don't understand what is going on in Missouri. Because Missouri's had this big, big ass paradigm shift in just the last, I want to say 20 years. Used to, we had really strict, stringent gun laws. And then the gun laws went from really strict to really liberal. And I, when I say liberal, I mean you have a lot of liberties now in terms of your gun rights. To give you an example, uh, in just handguns, for instance. In Missouri, with handguns, used to, you had to get a background check, get fingerprinted and palm printed, talk to a sheriff, pay for the background check, get permission to exercise your right. In other words, find out if you had a need to exercise your right, then get a buyer stamp for your gun. And then after you bought your gun, after a five or six day waiting period, mind you, you ended up. You would end up having to not be able. The gun could not leave your house unless it was in a locked case. You had to have your ammunition in the front of the vehicle, your gun in the back of your vehicle. All these hoops you got to jump through. Today, I go into a gun store. Uh, I want a Sigma P320 or whatever it is out there, the new Army gun that everyone likes to call it. Uh, I can buy that gun, go through a ten minute background check on average that's average i've seen them go from to the maximum of 30 minutes and i've actually recently my mom bought a gun and her background check was like he, he puts it in i'm like so how long will it take for the background check to get through because she wanted to know how long it would take and he goes oh it depends on what the atf is doing hey the background check is done about that quick <laughs> he had just sent it in and he was like oh hey it's done <laughs> they approved look at that they're like who is this chick Oh yeah, uh, she's pretty clean. Give her a fucking gun. It's, uh, if Missouri ATF, if you're not a criminal, they don't give a fuck. That's the one thing I can say about Missouri ATF. They are probably the shining example of what the ATF should be. They go after people who are specifically breaking the law. When I say specifically breaking the law, they actually uh, busted a dude a while back who was going to gun shows selling guns that he had had stolen. This dude had a massive table of just varying weapons that well, you would ask him, is this your collection? No, 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 I'm part of a company that sells, is what he would say. And I'm like, really? And then I got kind of miffed when he started telling me that an AR-10 was an AR-15 and he couldn't tell the difference. Uh, you, you look at the magazine well, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, uh, as, far, as far as it's going to go with them being disarmed, I'm pretty sure the McCloskeys are not defenseless. Like I said, it on average, it takes 10 minutes to buy a gun. And in the state of Missouri, unless you have a felony charge, uh, Mr. McCloskey could run off and buy another gun. I mean, what, what would probably happen is he'd get to the local gun shop and they'd be like, well, Mr. McCloskey, here's the thing. Um, we know you're a target of BLM now. Yeah. So, um, Mr. McCloskey, if, if we give you your gun here, there's a possibility you're going to have to use it again. And there's a possibility uh, Kim Garner is going to get her panties in a wad again and come after your gun. Well, you're saying I shouldn't buy a gun? No, we're saying you should probably buy two guns. <laughs> so you have a backup, you know? <laughs> they'll, they'll just take advantage of that. And and that comes to another thing. Money. All right? And we're, now we're going to get into the kind of the legal aspects of this. I do not see anywhere in the law. And I, I've had situations where I've had to pull guns on people before. I do not see anywhere in my experience where they have done anything wrong. We have videotape showing a showing people were and and you can hear people in the mob screaming verbal threats at the McCloskeys. 
And in the state of Missouri, kind of a funny thing when you have a bunch of Democrat laws, they're pretty liberal in defining what is assault. And walking up to someone and threatening to do harm, not kill them, threatening to do harm, is technically assault in the state of Missouri. It's, it's technically saying it's an intent to assault or a declaration of assault to an extent. And with that, it's, with that, you have the right afterward to pull a gun because they've declared that they have an intent to harm you. And you do have a right to pull a gun and stop the situation and use appropriate force. Now, if they don't continue towards you and, and they're like, oh, okay, man, you got a gun. I'm going to turn around and walk away. Uh, it's like I said in one video. You turn the only saving grace for you in Missouri if someone has even if someone has a reason to pull a gun, if you turn around your back to them and start walking away, they have a they have a right to stand their ground. They do not have a duty, they don't have a right to chase you down. They don't have a right to pursue, and if they shoot you in the back, that's automatic murder charge. So un, unless they unless the person you're shooting in the back is firing at people in a crowded area. Okay, that'd be the only time I could see you could shoot someone in the back. So turning your back to a person that has a gun pointed at you in the state of Missouri, if it is a situation where you're thinking of self, you're in a self-defense situation, is one of those ways of stopping that person. Because you turn around, you, you get into an altercation with someone, you say something, they pull a gun, they say, you better stop. Be like, okay, whoa, whoa, turn around and just start walking away. Because I tell you all the time, you're in Missouri, that's the best, that's the best defense you can have with someone who's a little over eccentric with guns. Can they shoot you in the back? Yeah, but you you at least got to know that, and that also plays in the back of their mind. If they shoot you in the back, most people know that's an automatic murder charge in the state. So getting off that, what I would say is with the evidence and everything that we have seen, even pointing a weapon at someone, like, like I said, I had a self-defense situation when I first bought a 12 gauge and it was like two months I ended up having to use it and I bought it because we had been robbed. I went out and it took me about a year to buy a gun, a little, little under a year, because I'm one of these people that if I decide to buy something, I don't have a lot of money, so I want to make that money work. I want to get something good. So I got a really nice uh, security shotgun is what they call it. It's, it's basically a military, it's basically a shotgun like they would take in the military or something like that, made in China. Uh, it was a Chinese knockoff of a Remington. So I was like, eh, it's a Chinese knockoff of a Remington. It's cheaper. And it had good reviews. So I was like, it had more modernized parts on it. The Chinese put some more modern crap on it. One of the few times I would buy something from China because it had really, really good reviews. I was like, well, it's it's good. So we're going to buy it anyway. We don't have a lot of money at the time. So I ended up grabbing it. And this dude went, was in the process of trying to rob my wife's vehicle. He was in the change tray trying to, uh, you know, Dave Chappelle joke and shooting crack addicts and whatnot. And, you know, got outside, my neighbor was with me, thankfully, and the dude, he asks the guy what he's doing, the dude steps out of the vehicle, threatens my life, then threatens to, threatens the, um, the sexual security of my wife and her life at the same time, pretty much he's going to rape her until she dies, and I pointed a loaded weapon at him, and turns out later he was unarmed. Well, the police, when they got done, they said, we have a witness saying that he has verbally threatened you. Okay. At that point, his right to live practically goes out the window. He said, the, the, the cop says, at that point, it's your decision if you want to shoot. He said, you didn't shoot him. A judge in the state, a judge in our state, and unless they're an asshat, are just going to look at it and say, well, here's the thing. You threatened to kill this guy. He could have killed you, but he, he just pointed the gun at you and got control of the situation. Missouri, like I said, Missouri is pretty liberal on gun rights. Okay, and I don't mean that in a, dad damn it, amazing Lucas. I don't mean that in the terms of all oh, they're liberal minded. I'm saying they're very liberty minded when it comes to your gun rights. Usually, the gun owner is in the right unless you do something absolutely asinine. So, if you show sometimes, sometimes even show pointing a gun at someone and showing restraint. Like I said, it comes down to actions first. If you are physically assaulted, or there is a verbal threat made. It doesn't even have to be a verbal threat in your life. It just has to be a verbal threat of harm. It's go time at that point. Now, if you point a gun at someone, they're like, ho, oh, oh, hang on, man, hang on, man. You're like, get the fuck off my property before I blow your head off. And they leave. You're in the right there, too, to an extent. It's a good idea to have some witnesses while you're at it. That's why having your wife go to the door and watch what's going on 
having her as a witness is a good thing. By the way, like I said, I don't think that they're going to have very many trouble. Now, the only problem I see with this situation is Kimberly Gardner. Kimberly Gardner, if you know anything about this bitch, she is sort of the Roscoe P. Coltrane to other Democrats' boss hog. In short, she is not the brains of the outfit at all. She is just a blunt instrument. That's why she's a DA. Uh, the mayor is pretty liberal, anti-gun. To give you an idea, the our mayor, the, not our mayor, I don't live in St. Louis, but St. Louis's mayor and their city council have requested multiple times to have separate gun laws like Chicago has. In other words, you have state laws and then you would have St. Louis city laws on guns, which could be more restrictive or more liberal or, you know, more conservative. Um, and every time Jefferson City has told her, fuck off, no. You are not going to make your own laws because the state constitution does not allow it. This is not Illinois. Okay? Illinois is a communist shithole, by the way. Sorry to Illinoisans. Y'all just have shit government. Okay? Fix your government, you probably fix a lot of your problems. The problem, and I say that's a problem, not for the McClaskeys. That's going to be a mild inconvenience because Mr. McClaskey, like I said, he's a lawyer. They live in a mansion. They've obviously got money. He could buy him an arsenal of AR-15s, and it would be it would take a lot of responses from BLM before he finally run through all of them. But as far as you know, her trying to put charges up, I almost would be willing to bet Kimberly Gardner would trump up charges, and I'd almost be willing to bet the Democrats in St. Louis would try to stack the jury and even the judge against the McClaskeys, and this would be an inconvenience. Until the McClaskeys go to the state, the, the higher courts in the state. And if this gets, the, the one of the things is I, I would tell a lot of gun channels, this is technically a boon to Second Amendment advocacy. Because if Kimberly Gardner does get stupid, I think someone with authority over her is going to step in, a Bloomberg or someone like that, and say, hey, shut this down now. Because if this case gets up to a higher court, say the state Supreme Court, it will set a precedence across the entire United States. A precedence that BLM doesn't want to have. In other words, like I said, Missouri state law on guns is very decidedly on the side of the gun owner. In many situations, it is very... It Not saying you cannot violate the law by exercising a Second Amendment rights... I'm saying it's not as easy as in New Hampshire or California or Illinois, New York or even Texas to violate your Second Amendment rights in a self-defense situation. It is almost, you you have a lot of laws helping you and you have a lot of Democrat laws on assault that that define assault very, very narrowly. Okay, it it's very these many of these laws very narrowly describe what assault is, or even a threat upon yourself. But each individual law narrowly describes a different scenario, and there's a shit ton of scenarios that can be that can fall in those two categories. So you have all that working for you. I think what will happen is either Kimberly Gardner is going to get shut down. Or she's going to stupidly keep going. She might railroad them in a city court. And they probably will get to a state court. Maybe the state Supreme Court. And what will happen is it will set a precedence across the country. Now here's the thing. Here's the kicker. The state of Missouri dictates that your car pretty much gives you the same property rights as your home to an extent. This is a problem for roadblocks, mind you. Because if B, because if this goes to the Supreme Court, the next time BLM rips open a car door and gets shot, the person who shoots them probably ain't going to jail afterward, and they probably won't even get arrested. Because you will have a it will have a precedence of federal law that everyone can look that lawyers can look back to and say, well, here in the state of Missouri, uh, the uh, you know the McClaskey Mark and Patricia McClaskey versus the St. Louis DEA versus the city of St. Louis, they ended up winning. So, as far as 
this being a problem, I say it will be uh, more than likely. I think this is going to be one of those things that's shut down because it's just like the AR thing where we found out that the ATF has been defining AR 15s wrong. <laughs> Does not qualify to an extent as uh, something that needs to be like it, the part that the, the lower receivers, I think something to the effect of the lower receivers don't totally qualify in that, an AR-15's lower receiver does not house the bolt like a lot of other guns do. It's actually a two-part system, so it technically doesn't qualify. And people have been winning cases on this. There's now been a push by the ATF to just, you know, just, just quietly solve these cases so they don't become a federal court. Because if this ever hits to a federal level, that that turns the entire um, AR-15's, technically the lowers could be sold without a serial number completed to an extent. Don't quote me on that, but that's how I'm reading it. Uh, this would set uh, an amazing president. They, they would probably want to go in there and shut this down before it gets to a higher court because they'd be like, look, this is going to be bad. They've got the money to fight this. They've got the knowledge to fight this. We are going to lose. Kim, shut it down now. Investigation's done. You tried to intimidate him. It didn't work. Give him the rifle and pistol back and just say, you know what, just just fuck it. We're going to back off and quietly let this go. All right? And then just tell BLM not to go near it. Because I do think this is an entire network. What's going on is you've got a bunch of rich liberals who are running things and you've got a bunch of Roscoes and idiots running around right now under the thumb of these richer a little bit more intelligent liberals, such as Bloomberg. Okay, you got Bloomberg who'd be a, a boss hog, and then you got whores demand action in every town for gun ter- every town for terrorism. Uh, they would be your Roscoes and your your uh, thugs, basically running around terrorizing everybody. Um, but they're under the thumb of some richer liberal. Kim Gardner is under the thumb of a richer liberal. Okay, they're going to probably tell her to shut this thing down. It's that she's going to pontificate a bit and be kind of pompous about things and make a big show. But I figure she's eventually going to drop it because they're going to say, look, you've got nothing. All right. Missouri law is too hardened. We cannot get Jefferson city to give us any different laws right now. We're kind of fucked right now. Also, Kim Gardner's under a lot of stress anyway, because she's right now in under investigation, I believe for falsifying evidence. And she's already hated by the Jefferson city because Jefferson city sent down the national guard. They rounded up the looters and she just turned them all loose. (laughs) <laughs> so, I mean, Jefferson City's not too thrilled, in my opinion. I wouldn't be very thrilled if I sent the National Guard down there, they did their job, and then some idiot root just completely erased all the progress they had done. I'd be pretty pissed off as well. Personally, I don't think that St. Louis needs to have the National Guard again. If BLM goes nuts, let them go nuts and just tell them, you're on your own. We sent the National Guard last time. You did not follow through with the prosecutions. Therefore, we are not sending the National Guard to protect your asses this time. If they come into this, if BLM comes in the city council and kills the entire city council, we're not sending the National Guard. You're going to have to live. You're going to have to go to your police department and ask the police departments of St. Louis to protect you at that point. Which kind of throws a wrench into the whole, you know, defund the police. But anyway, folks, that's all. That's all I've got to say about this particular situation. I'm not. It's not something I worry about. Because like I said, Missouri law, unless you've done something really stupid with a gun and you're just basically really ignorant. Uh, and here's the thing. The McClaskeys, yeah, they were pretty ignorant, but they didn't kill no one. And they just wanted people off their property. And that's going to play That's going to play decidedly in their favor. I think they'll get, if it does go anywhere, they'll get railroaded in, in city court. But once it starts hitting the state courts, eh, it's probably going to get shut down immediately. I don't see it going past a regular state court. I mean, I don't know if there's a court in between state and and a Supreme Court or in between city court and Supreme Court. Uh, There might be. But I figure what will eventually happen is it'll get to a higher court and then the higher court will just shut it down unless Kim Gardner and the city of St. Louis wants to keep pursuing it. What I do say does need to happen, though, is when the McClaskeys win this, they need to sue the city, sue Kim Gardner, and possibly even sue the mayor and the police departments for not doing their jobs. All right? Because the police need, I know some people are saying back the blue, but here's what I'm going to say. Police departments need to get a good suing. If they don't, 
if they don't go out there and do their job of protecting the people and they're afraid of losing money, you've got to give them a bigger reason to, you've got to give them the reason that they're going to lose more money not protecting your ass than they will of disobeying the mayor's order and going out and doing their job. All right. And that is, they're going to get sued. Every, Kim Gardner, the mayor, the city itself, and the police department all need to be sued. If nothing else, the security at their private area also needs to be sued. Whoever isn't, whoever was supposed to do something, they should have gotten down there and stopped this mob. We wouldn't be in this situation. But alas, that's not what happened. Anyway, folks, I am the last Raider signing off here. Tell me what you think in the comments. Also, be sure to like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and hit that bell for notification. I do videos all the time. Excuse me. Anyway, stay safe, stay frosty, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye now.